Great. So I think you're all, mostly anyway, not new to this group. There's Sam here who is new. Um, I don't see you anymore, but hopefully you're, yeah, you're still here with us. So um, I won't do too much of an introduction. We'll just get into some meditation and make good use of the time. And at the end, there'll hopefully be five or ten minutes to share anything you wish, or if you have reflections or questions or complaints, you're very welcome. So as with all meditation, we're just trying to incline the mind gently in the direction of metta, almost like a question, right? What is metta? Like, can I just bring forth a little bit of gentleness, softness, acceptance to my experience? It's not something we're trying to produce. It's not something we need to get right or be good at or feel a certain way because metta encompasses everything. It encompasses all emotions, including sadness, including even anger. We can have metta towards that as well. And that's precisely why metta is a tool to overcome and to start to diminish these afflictive emotions, um, emotions that cause us suffering, that cause us harm. So we don't need to judge anything but more to see how we can skillfully relate to things in a way that softens them and encourages wholesome states to arise. Okay, So we have to be careful, especially with things like metta, that we don't use it as a way to bypass anything unpleasant or unwanted in our mind or body, but we use it to heal all the sicknesses, the mental sicknesses, you know, the tiredness, etc. And that healing comes through acceptance and through softening around these things. So when you're ready and when you're really comfortable, as comfortable as you can possibly make yourself, and that might mean sitting, that might mean leaning against something, it might mean an extra cushion or shawl, it might mean simply being present to the discomfort, but at least showing your body that you care. when you have found that position that suits you today if you are comfortable you can close your eyes gently very good i see someone getting another shawl so really taking time to settle in and when your eyes are closed you might notice parts of the body that are not as comfortable as you thought they were so you can still make adjustments Give your ankles more space. Maybe if you're sitting on a chair, you could move your feet forward slightly so they're not directly under the knees. That just helps take the pressure off the knee joint. Relaxing the thighs. Allowing the buttocks to really sink into the ground or the chair sofa even imagining everything expand beyond the confines of the skin Shifting your weight if you find it's unevenly distributed so that your buttocks are comfortable and at ease. Scanning your back with this really kind, soft awareness. Noticing if your spine wants to 
be straight or slightly curved or leaning back. And perhaps rolling the shoulders just to encourage them to release any tension that's unnecessary now. Invite them to take up the space. Feeling down into your belly. Softening around any tightness or anxiety. Again, giving it space. Sometimes taking in the area just outside the skin. Expanding the mind to hold everything with lightness, with space. Feeling the chest, the rib cage, the area around the heart. Just receiving any sensations with an attitude of friendliness. Noticing the throat, the neck, balancing the head so that the neck muscles can relax. And there's a feeling of uprightness without being stiff. Upright yet relaxed. And relaxing any muscles in the face, especially those around the jaw, relaxing your tongue, lips, cheeks, and gently exploring the area around the brow, letting the eyes fall back into their socket. The eyelids gently closed. Maybe even imagining the skin on the forehead slowly softening, relaxing outward. Feeling the temples and the scalp. Especially noticing any sensations on the top of the head. And noticing the space above the head. And if it's easy for you, now feeling the whole body from head to toe. Just a generalized sense of the body sitting, being held by the ground. and stretching upward toward the sky.
relaxing into the space around. And imagining if it works for you, that this space around you, below you and above, is infused with kindness and warmth. Perhaps the energy of gentle sunlight or the loving gaze of someone with deep compassion and loving kindness. The presence of someone you deeply respect and feel a sense of safety around. Perhaps someone who embodies the qualities of loving kindness. Benevolence. Friendliness. And warmth. Total acceptance. total goodwill. You might use your imagination or bring up memories of times you felt so safe, so held. Perhaps in nature, perhaps around a very beautiful, powerful being, a teacher or a very dear friend. If that's not easy to access, imagine how it might feel to be fully at ease. To be fully held. To have nothing to do <clears throat> but receive <clears throat> this loving kindness that's just available to you. You don't have to be anything special. You don't have to deserve it, to hold on to it, to make it stay. You're just held in loving kindness as though being gazed upon by a Buddha. And you feel completely held.
What a relief to relax. To trust that this loving kindness is just available. And to let it pour in through every cell, every pore, and into every part of your body and mind. Healing any tension, any pain, any disease. Helping soften any emotion. Everything is included and held in this kindness. Completely at peace. And now if you wish, imagine inviting someone very dear to you into this field of loving kindness where they too can be held. They too can just receive this golden glow as though basking in the sunshine. The sunshine that shines equally on all. May they too know that they're held in unconditional loving kindness. without needing to change a thing. But just because they're human, or maybe they're an animal, just because they breathe, Relaxing more deeply in the knowledge that this loving kindness is available to all. And allowing other beings to share this beautiful healing field. Whoever pops to mind. Perhaps first family or friends. People you're at ease with and can relax more deeply. Knowing that you're sharing this beautiful 
gentle kindness and peace. And if you notice any resistance to receiving this loving kindness, just release that resistance. You're already here, you're already held. There's nothing you need to do. Just be, just breathe. And gently opening this invitation to all beings in this Zoom room. All of us here with our struggles, 
our aches and pains, our COVID, anxiety. May we all know that we're totally loved. Completely accepted and embraced. Everything, everyone belongs. Feeling that we're all held together in something so much bigger than us, this pure, unconditional love that's available to tap into at any time. May we learn to trust the power of this loving kindness. to relax, to be at ease. So much at ease that everything starts to disappear. The boundaries between our body and this room borders between our countries, the differences between our genders or our race, all of that just dissolves when we manage to tap into this unconditional loving kindness, unconditional contentment and peace. And now expanding the field of your perception to invite all beings in your local area into this vast container of metta. All the beings in your household, maybe your neighbors, people in the street, traveling or sitting at their office at the desk. Those in the hospitals, those in the schools, or animals, or pets, 
May all beings in this area, this town, this city, wherever you live, for this moment know that they're totally held. May they also receive this loving kindness, allow it into their heart to heal their physical sicknesses or emotional pain. May all beings in the whole country where you live, may they too receive this loving kindness, relax deeply into the feeling of just being held. For a moment, maybe longer, All harmful speech abates. And may all beings learn to look at each other with kindly eyes as they share this beautiful feeling of just being held. No need to fight or struggle for your bit. This loving kindness is available equally to all. From the worms in the soil to the birds in the sky and all invisible beings non-humans, may they all receive this loving kindness. Just because they exist. May all beings across the oceans in other countries, other continents, across this whole planet Earth. Human beings, non-human beings. Those living on land, in water, in the earth or in the sky, may all beings just rest deeply in unconditional love. Whatever they've done, whatever they may do, whether they follow the Dhamma or their behavior is not so skillful. May they all receive this loving kindness, gentle, forgiving, embracing, no matter their faults, no matter their perception of themselves. For a moment, may they be healed.
imagining this whole planet Earth with all life forms just floating in the atmosphere of loving kindness. A loving kindness that is so powerful it can heal the devastated forests, the ecosystems. And bring balance and harmony back to the world. All beings who live on this planet Earth and this planet Earth herself. May we all receive this powerful loving kindness and be healed. And of course, this loving kindness extends even further into the whole universe. Infinite, boundless, until only love exists. Just resting in this boundless loving kindness beyond designation, beyond even the human form. Just love. so much bigger than us. And now gently bringing your awareness back into this room, into your body, into this being that you call yourself. Gently receiving the sensations in your own body. still bathed in loving kindness, relaxed. And lingering in any place where you feel relaxed, 
where there are fairly pleasant or neutral sensations, or any place in the mind where you feel a sense of ease. Just holding that gently as I chant the loving kindness blessing to end the meditation. <clears throat> Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Ata Bawa Pariapana Sabe Itio Sabe Povisa Sabe Aria Sabe Anavia Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Winipadika I wear a horn to I be a badger horn to I need a horn to Sukiatanam Pariharan to Duka Monjan to Yadalada Sampadito Mawekachan to Kama Saka Sadu, sadu, sadu. <laughs> I see some of you are going for the big sad. Oh, it's nice to stretch anyway. <laughs> okay. Rub your eyes, stretch, <laughs> move if you wish or not. And uh, yeah, we do have some time to check in a little bit after that. And, um, <laughs> see if that worked or brought a moment of peace for you or not it was a little bit of an experiment <laughs> we normally use a little bit of uh, verbalization and suggestion to the mind and it's usually a little bit more active proactive perhaps but um, at least for myself I felt more like resting in loving kindness and hopefully you were able to do that a little bit as well. So people are saying it was peaceful. That's great. It's also great if it wasn't, if you didn't know what to do, if it felt kind of a bit contrived or however it felt, it would be interesting to hear from you. Or if you have any questions or um, want any advice on how to continue the practice in your daily life, this is the time to speak you can raise your hand if you wish and uh, lots of hearts coming that's really lovely um and you can speak your voice will be recorded never your video so it'll always remain on my mugshot <laughs> uh, i have to put my face quite close to the camera because of the sound so um yep and also you're welcome to write anything in the chat. It can also be unrelated to the meta practice we've just done, if you have anything to share. <laughs> I love a discombobulated meta meditation. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad because that's what you get today. <laughs> that's the best I can offer. So who knows how it lands? 
it's always different for all of us on various days so there's no such thing as being able to do meta practice or not be able to do meta practice but any of you that have followed me for a while will know that i do make it an important part of my practice um either by practicing a few minutes at the end of every meditation which i do uh or at the end of the day or in the morning which i usually forget the first thing in the morning i have to admit um or whether you actually have sessions that you devote entirely to metta or even begin your practice with metta meditation before you perhaps open up to things like the breath um, I found it really just an incredibly valuable and essential, to be honest, essential and central part of the practice. Because with meta practice, we're uh, also developing right view of suffering and of the way out, of the importance in relating to people with as much loving kindness as we can, realizing and recognizing that we don't know what people are going through. Right On the surface, we can look happy, we can look like we're doing well, we're successful in life, but we really never know another person's struggle. So it helps for me anyway to give people the benefit of the doubt and, of course, to um, learn to speak in ways that are kind, um, learn to perceive in ways that are a little kinder. Um, and, of course, it's an antidote to ill will and to worry and anxiety as well. Especially, I think, when we can just relax like that. I was using a guided meditation that was similar to that during my retreat. Uh, maybe simpler as well. Just that invitation to feel that loving kindness is available already and we don't need to do anything to bring it up. You know, just that suggestion sometimes allows me to just relax and sit back and receive, right? Because we tend to be such givers in life. I'll just go through a few of the comments. Ease my tummy pain and love the phrase, all is being held and embraced and belongs. <laughs> Loved sending Meta even to some of my challenging colleagues. Yay, with deep gratitude of Meta. Great, and I think that you can trust that because there was no particular suggestion of who to send it to or who could be invited in. But sometimes that just comes when we're ready, when the mind's ready and, and wide enough to embrace people we might not normally think of embracing or naturally wish to. Noticing my not being worthy of love and kindness arising. Excellent that you notice that. This is a constant relationship, it seems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel that I sometimes need to be given or receive permission in order to really relax, you know, or receive permission to be happy. It's like, is it okay if I'm happy, even though I'm not perfect, you know? <laughs> even though maybe sometimes I don't think I'm worth love, is it still anyway okay to let it into my heart? Like, how would that feel? Even if you can't do it right now, how would it feel? How could it feel? Yeah, just that suggestion. I've always found it easier to send meta to others than myself, and I have to work on that. Yeah. I mean, normally in these meta sessions over the weeks, when they continue, we go through different categories. So we start with ourselves, and then we might go to the love person. Today it was a bit of a mix, but it was mainly ourselves. And um, after a while, you start to find that it evens out, but it takes time. And I think, you know, for most of us, especially maybe growing up in kind of materialistic societies, consumeristic societies where we have to do so much and push ourselves beyond our limits, you know, and produce and be everything to everyone. It's really difficult. You know, even our education systems are aimed at like looking at the faults, right? Improving the bits that you are your weaknesses. We're very rarely taught to rejoice in the bits that are okay. Like that would be seen as economically unproductive, <laughs> even though it wouldn't be, it would be productive, I think. Um, so there's a big conditioning behind that. And uh, yeah, it's the same for me. I found it easier with the loved person or the ben benefactor, someone I have an enormous amount of gratitude toward. That seems easier initially. But then when the meta starts to grow, you know, you, you can find that you can bring in yourself, you can bring in even people that, you know, are fairly neutral to you you don't have a particularly invested relationship with and then even the difficult colleagues family members or people that have harmed you can come in 
but yeah, it's a gentle process. Worked beautifully for me, loved being contained and it's always there. Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? When I have that sense of being bathed in meta, it automatically flows out to everyone else. Ah, something, anything else seems impossible. Um, yeah, I can't, the last part was not written clearly. I can't quite understand that, but I think I get where you're coming from, Kim. Yeah. When I opened my eyes, all I could see was a big, open, light blue space. It was the sky in front of me of a bright winter morning, morning of eight, minus eight. This is in Norway, broken up by pink, feathery clouds. Beautiful, peaceful start of this freezing day. Excellent. Ah, yeah, because anything else feels impossible. Okay. So this person saying when they have that sense of being bathed in meta, it automatically flows out to everyone else because anything else seems impossible. Yeah, yeah. Like when it starts from meta, it has to come out as meta, isn't it? <laughs> That's beautiful. And we have to be resourced, first of all. Yeah. That's the best way. It's not the only way. Some people say you can't have meta to others unless you can have it to yourself. And I always find that really difficult actually because it sounds like such a barrier it's like but I don't have it for myself but I know that sometimes I'm not as kind to myself as I am to others but I can definitely feel genuine kindness to others so I think you start from wherever you can you know you can start with the beauty with the I said the word beautiful because I read the word beautiful here but <laughs> the benefactor or the friend you can start any way you wish whatever gets it going for you it could be a pet it could be an imaginary being you know, Ajahn Brahm often talks about it could even be a plant and I just received lots of lovely plants yesterday and I, I definitely feel meta for those plants. Yeah. In fact, I need to go and look after them pretty soon. So um, whatever works, it really doesn't matter because it's not about the object, it's about that feeling in your heart, that softening, that opening, even a little bit of that, even just suggesting that to the mind starts to open up the channels of loving kindness. So, yeah, it's interesting to me that, um, and it's fine that most of the comments are in the chat. I just um, <clears throat> wonder if it might be that we need warming up a little bit together first, because we used to speak a little bit more. And now, <laughs> now it seems like people are a bit less familiar with the Zoom and a little bit more reluctant to speak. And maybe we don't need to so much, right? Because now that COVID's over, more or less, not really over, but, you know, the lockdowns and all the restrictions are kind of, over um yeah we maybe don't need to speak so much but it's still nice christina says that you're all shy i'm shy too but i have to speak <laughs> so it's okay it's okay but just an encouragement to um yeah to speak because it's lovely for people to hear different voices and to hear one another i think and uh, yeah all in due course <laughs> Just an invitation. Oh, look, someone has their hand up last minute. <laughs> I'll come to you, Rob, as an honorary speaker because you did raise your hand. And uh, we'll finish up very soon. If anyone does have to go, that's fine. But if you can hang on another five minutes. Uh, oh, now there's two. <laughs> OK, we'll come to Rob. <clears throat> Hi, uh, yeah, it's just um, something that keeps coming up with my meditation is um, not setting it right at the beginning and just kind of going into it without kind of a thought of, okay, now I'm doing meta meditation mm. and kind of setting that up as, as, mm. as like programming your mind. Yeah. Because on that one, I didn't do it again. And my mind was kind of distracted with lots of, it's especially if there's lots of strange things going on in, you know, in your personal life, it all kind of comes in. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that just in case people have got that disease. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful that you know um, that little method. And yeah, sure, you sometimes might forget, but it's a really powerful way yeah, to um, establish mindfulness. So that is to make a very clear intention to yourself at the beginning, not right at the beginning, but after you've closed your eyes, you've you know felt your body and then you say, OK, this session will be dedicated to meta meditation in this session i will incline my mind to loving kindness i will cultivate loving kindness whatever you want to say however you want to 
articulate it to yourself you just make that intention that this is now my own time it's my own practice time i can leave aside the things in my life and i can just dedicate this time to metta so just making that intention is a kind of mindfulness um, which Ajahn Brahm calls programming mindfulness. And then you forget about it and you still might get distracted, but you might actually come back to it more readily if you've told yourself that in the beginning. Yeah. So it's not like you have to keep getting on your own back and saying, come on, come on, do meta, do meta. You shouldn't be thinking, it's not that. It's more like you set the intention in the beginning and it acts as a kind of a little bit of a guard for the mind. So yeah, yeah, just to... An extra way to establish that presence of mind and that intention at the beginning. Great, thank you. Um, did Nikki want to say something very quickly? Oh, Madhu, okay, Madhu. No, I'm all right, but thanks. Bye. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure who's speaking now. Go for it, whoever you are. Madhu, maybe? Can you unmute? Um, Hi. I just want to say that I received a bear and, Hello. Very cute. and thank you yes, for mailing it and I named it Karuna, oh. uh, Compassion and um, so I, I recently started my new job and um, everything's been going well, however, I now that it's been like two months, I realized that the immediate colleague that I'm working with, uh, we're very similar, but he's very, he can be very impatient and sometimes very easily stressed out. And me being very sensitive to other people's stress, I get, I tend to get stressed out as well. And it, it hasn't been easy because it's kind of, I find it's affecting my self-confidence um, because somebody's uh, being very stressed out and then want things to happen like really quickly and being impatient and sometimes kind of feels like they're being a bit dominating. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you just have to... <laughs> sometimes accept and just do a lot of metta and like have compassion to yourself for yourself and right. the yeah absolutely i wonder actually if at that time that it happens you could even just formulate those sentences to yourself as a way to kind of anchor the mind you know because it might be difficult at that moment to actually generate genuine compassion or loving kindness like the emotion of it but it might be possible to say under you know in your mind silently like may you be peaceful may you relax may you be well may you feel safe or whatever it is that you feel that person doesn't have at that moment you know they're really stressed out for some reason it could be other things in their personal life so maybe wishing them a sense of ease a sense of safety and just sort of saying that to yourself because i what i find is that even when people don't know that you're doing that, they suddenly feel that you're a safe person to be around. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you're thinking is kind of being emanated somehow, right? They kind of pick up on that. And if you have these very uh, beautiful, harmless thoughts towards that person, they might start to relax. It could take time, but it might be an idea just in that moment when you feel that your own stress is kind of getting revved up, you know, or you're feeling a bit like overwhelmed by it. You could say to that person those phrases or also to yourself, like, it's okay. I have time. I can do this in my own pace. You know, say those things to yourself, whatever you need to hear at that time. It might be helpful. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Sometimes it just takes a really big toll on my self-confidence. Yeah. That's really tough, yeah. And I don't know if at some point it might be necessary to have a conversation about that. I don't know with whom, whether you have another person who's a boss or who's someone you feel safe with or even that person themselves maybe because they probably don't realize i know for myself if i'm in a bit of a spin or a flap you know you don't always realize how it's affecting the people around you and um yeah it sounds like a little bit more mindfulness on both yeah. on their part might be really helpful for them as well 
Yeah, actually, we did talk about it. Okay. So we did talk about it about a week ago, but there's still like ups and downs. Yeah. But I guess you just have to. Yeah. Be really kind to yourself and maybe, you know, the meta practice to yourself daily to directly address those things that are becoming problematic for you, like the lack of confidence, you know, just reassuring yourself that you're competent, that, you know, you're doing the best you can. Um, I think that could be helpful to make it a daily practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I wish you well. <laughs> I wish you well. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Oh, I've just noticed in the chat that someone... Uh, mentioned Leonie's baby how beautiful oh look oh hi hello Rumi oh what a little beauty I can just imagine he's a really warm bundle (laughs) warm and soft oh how beautiful congratulations both of you (laughs) oh okay um I'm aware that we're running over time and people might need to leave, but I would like to come to Louise. If you do, then that's fine. Um, we'll probably just be a couple more minutes. <laughs> Hi, Louise. Can we ask you to unmute? Hi. Um, I have, That was a lovely meditation and it really helped me. I'd like just, because uh, since the retreat, I've had an immense opening up of emotion and of, not feeling safe and having to really, really reach out to people. Um, but I've also been, well, the key thing has been feeling anxiety. And I think it's getting better. But I'd just like some guidance from you on, you know, talked about it being my friend. And I sort of feel like I almost don't know how to how to do it, how to... I've been feeling like I don't know how to work with my emotions and embrace them. And right. I mean, does anybody, because it's a process and it's something we have to learn on the way. I mean, especially because emotions that arise are often things that we haven't seen before. I mean, the more we go in the practice, the more we meet different terrain. Um, and it's often uncharted for ourselves, you know, but the practice, as you say, opens us up. So they are things that have, in a sense, being there that maybe just haven't come out into the light. And I kind of trust that when they do, it's usually because uh, we're ready to see them and there can be some scope for healing involved there. There can be a real scope for healing. And I think it's really key when we're working with emotions that we're not working with them to make them go away, that it's understood that we're working with them as a friend, like as in we're learning to... uh, befriend them we're learning how to be with them how to let them be um so that's the first most important thing um that we're learning to kind of open our hearts to the extent that we can feel safe with these emotions feel safe with ourselves um and allow them to be there and i think you know it's a really wonderful step that you just took to actually articulate how you're feeling you know, in a group also, because that already shows a sense of being at ease with the emotion, you know, at least a little bit that you can acknowledge it's there and you can still show up, you can still express it, talk about it. And that's what I mean, really, about learning to kind of befriend it. It's like, okay, it's part of me right now. It's not permanent, but it's part of my experience right now. Um, How can I be in the world with that emotion rather than how can I you know, kind of pacify that emotion because it's difficult to be with. But how can I actually be? Yeah, it might mean that you're more vulnerable. It might mean that you can't always show up. It might mean that, you know, you need certain kinds of company and to avoid other kinds of company for a time. Um, You might need more time alone, whatever it is, but to be really gentle and respectful to that um, so that you learn to be with it, but without pushing it away, but also be able to pull back when you need to okay like i don't have to make it the central focus all the time um so at times okay to take a breather like have more rest have more downtime or more time alone and maybe work with something else at that time like loving kindness for example 
um, or or like body awareness or even just doing something else. I mean, one of the things that I did during my retreat in Perth, because after four months of solitude, quite a lot of issues came up in the project and in other areas of my life. And it led to a lot of full scale anxiety attacks, um, almost twice a day at times, like it was really intense. And it was also to do with hormones because I'm going through like the perimenopause, maybe full menopause, I don't know, but the hormones crash repeatedly throughout the day and um i spoke to my doctor and she said that um a lot of the symptoms i'm talking about can be related to external things but they can also be physiological because i'm describing like what happens when the progesterone just crashes like and it's already really low and then the whole body was just full of anxiety and sometimes i was in a public area when this would happen when this would arise and I said to Ajahn Brahm, this is embarrassing. You know, I've just come out of retreat. It's not inspiring. I'm supposed to be a leader. And this is, ah, oh, I don't like crying in public. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a private person. Ooh. And he said, no, it is inspiring because you're a human being. So just, you know, don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. Like turn around and the people are there. The people on the retreat are right in front of me. And I spoke to them and I said, yeah, you know, I've just had a really difficult interview. I've been crying and I'm full of anxiety. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? And they said, no, it's wonderful. You know, we're really rooting for you. What you're doing is wonderful. Let us get you some chocolate. Let us get you some hot milk. <laughs> and then they talked about their difficulties. And it was just so healing to be around people um you know who who i can be myself with like I, mean, I can't be anything else right i mean you can't actually like suppress it because that makes it worse so i just kind of took the plunge and had to say okay look at me you know i've obviously been crying i'm going through anxiety and you know and, uh, and it was really healing to notice that other people didn't judge me at all so i think we add a big element of like shame to our emotions sometimes and um yeah, a big element of, of judging ourselves and feeling like we shouldn't have that, especially if I'm this type of person or in this kind of role, you know, but actually these things are such universal experiences. And once we start to kind of normalize and destigmatize them for ourselves, you know, and also partly through discussing it with others, then I think it becomes a little bit less frightening uh it's more of a mouse and less of a monster as the old phrase goes yeah so i don't know if that's a little bit of help i mean it's not really methods but it's more like attitudes and ways of relating yeah that is really, that is really really helpful for for me to actually speak on screen and say mm -hmm. that it's quite a big deal but actually it's coming much easier and Great. i have been talking to lots of people and and, and it, it's changing friendships, it's changing relationships, because I tend to be everyone else's listener. And I, I'm fine, really. And and that's just been blocking all my emotions. Right. Um, being real. What an insight. Yeah. What an insight. Oh, wonderful. I feel so much medita for you now. I feel a lot of joy for you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to continue because I do have time. And again, if anybody needs to leave, please don't feel shy or that it's rude or anything like that. Um, but I would like to come to Christina because you said that you've also been working with strong emotions. You might have something to share. Yeah. Yeah, um, not so much anxiety, more um, the grief end of things. And I... I strongly identify, I guess, through my family background and so on, there's a lot of shame connected with experiencing negative feelings. You're meant to not have negative feelings. So for me, um, working on befriending and connecting to the feeling has been a really helpful step to take and using um, breath meditation to help me do that so when the feeling's there you know focusing on in breath and out breath and then greeting the emotion so welcome welcome my sadness and extend you know working on the meditation extending a sense of love towards it it's initially really really hard to do and feels really 
strange to 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 do that but i found um it's it can be really effective at keeping a connection there not pushing away and suppressing but a loving kindness connection welcoming my pain and Titnut Han make, has this reference or this comment of smiling, smiling even at my suffering, and I and I'm trying to embody that more. Smile, smile even at my suffering, welcome my suffering, and yeah, you know, just trying to sit with that with breath work as well. And yeah, so that's my. That is, I'm just sharing some of the sentiments with other people who are experiencing strong emotions and. I'm on the journey to slightly, not so much anxiety, but other strong ones. So, yeah. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Suffering is the first noble truth. So it's noble. It's a noble truth if we learn to have the right attitude towards it. Yeah. Beautiful. And I love the, um, the uh, suggestion also of breathing through these things. But again, breathing into them or breathing with them rather than breathing them away because <laughs> we have to be so careful. And it's normal. I mean, it's not like you're doing something wrong if you're trying to push things away because that's what we always do. That's just the old habit. You know, it's every time you break that habit by breathing with or by smiling at that you're actually practicing. And you, I mean, in a very profound way, like it's it's breaking condition very very strong conditioning like I would say one moment of that profound shift is worth 10 moments of you know the same old habit right because you wouldn't have had any of those moments without the practice so every time we're able to relate to something in a pretty radical way right it's against all our conditioning it's against the way we're neurologically wired then it has a massive impact in you know it's actually changing our conditioning um, and I think, you know, with people who are really developed on the path, it actually changes their kind of neural networks in their brain. Yesterday, I was looking for the word neural plasticity, 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 <laughs> um, which means the brain changes, you know, it, it's shaped by the way we respond. So, yeah, yeah. So it becomes easier and easier and we remember it more and more often. Just remember to smile. So, thank you. That's beautiful. I love that um, little tip. And I will also use that in my own practice. Yeah. I just want to come to this lovely comment by Stefano. I really appreciate this. That a Buddhist leader is someone who shows people how to accept themselves. I think that's so lovely because that's why it's such a practice to accept oneself first, isn't it? Like, it's only through accepting my emotions that I can, you know, help you to accept yours or that any of us can help each other to accept ours. And I often remind myself of that when I'm experiencing an emotion that I find, yeah, I don't really like the word negative. We have been conditioned to see them as negative, but I would say more like an afflictive emotion. In other words, it causes suffering because that's what the Buddha's interested in, suffering and the end of suffering. So I think, you know, it's when anxiety arises in me, it's like an opportunity to understand it and to learn how to work with it so that I can then be more present for others going through the same. And in that way, you know, we, yeah, it, we can start to see these things as gifts, you know, because in the future, you might be someone who can sit and hold that space for another. And you can do that far more deeply and authentically if you've been able to hold it in yourself. So. But there's no place, I mean, I think anyway, unless you're fully enlightened, that we've got it and we've got it right and we know exactly how to accept ourselves 100%. I mean, that's maybe our hat, but all of us, including Buddhist leaders, are people that are just finding our way. So it's a journey we take together. <laughs> Good. All right. I am going to let um, Derek say a few words for those who are still going to stay present. And again, no obligation but he wanted to just close up so yes firstly thank you very much venerable for that meditation um <laughs> yes if anybody doesn't have a few more minutes to spare then please feel free to leave but for those who do have a few minutes i would like to say a few words on behalf of the anukampa team because we are currently in the process of developing the new methods for the new monastery which is just starting up and Venerable Chande is very very busy with it and the team are quite busy as well and you we'll are. 
we're trying to establish a way that we can help support the monastery. And the way we've come up with so far is this calendar list, which I've just put in the chat box. And this is still in development, so it's going to be increasingly developed over the times to come. For anybody who's watching the video, it's anucamperproject.org forward slash calendar dash list. And this list contains the times when people have offered food for the community, because Venerable Chanda at the moment often has people staying. And the community needs food on a daily basis. So there's a, a daily dana offering. And if you'd like to be involved in offering this dana on a daily basis or once a month. Yeah, not every day. Probably one person will do it every day. <laughs> No, if can. you'd like to <laughs> offer Dana once a month or even less, whenever it suits you, then please write to us at success on this calendar list at team at anucamperproject.org and we'll help to arrange this. And the calendar is not currently fully updated. So there are some days when there is Dana still needed that's not written on the list. So especially look out for needed or available on the calendar list. If you scroll to the bottom of the page as well, there's also a needed items list. So another option is to offer a shop from a supermarket that can be delivered and there'll be some items on the needed items list. But please also contact us at team at anucamperproject.org and we have regularly contact with Venerable Chanda to speak about what is needed for the community. And finally, if you'd like to, you can also go and visit, but we're especially looking for people who'd like to visit for more than three days three days to a week at a time, because otherwise there's too much coming and going at the monastery. It takes away a bit of the peace of the place. Um, but if you'd like to visit and help with the community work, keeping up the house, also um, helping to support by offering food on a daily basis, then please also write to us at team at anucamperproject.org with the dates that you might like to come. Thank you, Matthias, for putting that in the chat box. And... What have I forgotten? Um, well, you haven't <laughs> forgotten anything, but I would just, from my own perspective, um, from what would be very supportive to me and what is necessary to develop the project and to develop the monastery is long-term people. So it's true that you can come for a shorter stay and the first day is normally a week unless we know you. And, you know, also the space is quite limited. We only have like, we'll only be having actually one guest room pretty soon because uh, someone else might come along. <laughs> it might even be someone in robes <laughs> for a while. Um, so, yeah, so what would work, what we're looking for in the long run, of course, is like longer term support. So anyone who would consider coming into a steward role or staying for a month or um even people with aspirations of course eventually to ordain but for now it's building the foundations it's building the team of long-termers you know i have really committed volunteers in derrick and other co-hosts here and also like many people you know that have been around from the beginning but not so many who work on it on a daily basis with me so i'm still managing pretty much everything like organizing all the retreats and the tours and the guest bookings and the website and the newsletter and the list goes on and all the teaching so it's too much and um, what we need is a community so that's what we're aiming to develop not just a place for short-term guests because that is obviously work you know being able to host guests takes a foundation of a strong community um so not that we're always going to be able to work at the output level but we also need to build things up from the foundation level so i guess that's the main message from me um and bit by bit that happens you know bit by bit there are a few people here who want to continue to support in more long-term ways and that is very welcome um just to say also for the people here now that um sometimes people write in and they want to be assigned volunteer roles and i'm also the volunteer manager so it just is hard when i have deadlines for things like organizing retreats to have the time to bring in new volunteers so it's a bit of a a situation where I can only do that sometimes in the year um, when I have a couple of lighter weeks, for example. So please be patient, but we're doing our best. And, and I'm very happy that we've come this far to have a little place where it can already start to run as a monastery. And it is running as a monastery now. So I have one guest um, and a few more booked in after her. So, you know, this is how we just set things in motion. 
for the future, for the long term. So it's about community. It's about growing community. It's not about me. It's just that I started the whole thing. So a lot of the time I'm on my own, but this is a place for us. Okay, so that's what I want to say. And thank you very much, Derek, for mentioning ways that people can be involved. And thank you all for your wonderful practice and support. I'm sorry to keep you so long, but I'm quite impressed that you're still here. And I will wave goodbye so that you can enjoy the rest of the morning. Lovely to see all of you and lovely to see you, Maria, in Norway. <laughs> That's really, really nice. I think it's the first time you've come, isn't it, to an online one? And also to Sam, it's your first time. So thank you for being here. And thank you, everybody who, you know, opened, openly shared. It's so enriching. And so beautiful to hear from you. So thank you. Take care. Take care.